Good morning, everyone. Um, I would like to welcome you to this final um, declaration prayer session of this week. Um, it's so great to have you with us. Um, I'd like to welcome you, especially on this Saturday morning. I am sure that there is a double portion blessing for those of you who are up at seven o'clock on a Saturday morning to join us in prayer. So you are so, so welcome. Um, whether this is your first time with us or whether you've been joining all week, um, we just pray that God will bless you and meet with us as we pray this morning. My name is Lynn Patterson. Um, I am the head of prayer mobilization at Tear Fund, and it is my privilege to be your host this morning. We've been praying for different themes and topics throughout this week, and our focus today is on healing and well-being. Um, that's a real passion um, of ours at Tear Fund. Um, and, you know, you don't need me to tell you that we live in a broken world that is far from how God intended it to be. And um, at Tear Fund, we work through the local church around the world to see healing and restoration uh, come to communities all around the world who have suffered the, the often devastating and traumatic effects of extreme global poverty. And we know that we can't see that, that fullness of, of healing and restoration and well-being, shalom of God, come without his help. Um, so prayer is such a critical part of that. So it's great to be praying into these important areas, especially after the year that we've had. We know that there's, there's even more brokenness and pain has come through this pandemic. And so just what a joy it is to know that God is in control and we can lift up our world before him um, and, and just trust that he is going to come and meet with us and, and move at the sound of our voices this morning as we pray. So I'm excited about this session. And uh, we've got two amazing leaders um, from Birmingham who are going to be uh, leading us in prayer this morning. They are Pastor Brian Scott and Minister Leonie Martin. So I'd like to welcome them now. It is great to have you both with us. They are from uh, Cannon Street Memorial Baptist Church in, in Birmingham. So uh, welcome, Brian. Welcome, Leone. It's so great to have you with us. How are you both today? How's, how's, how's things looking in Birmingham today? Um, it doesn't seem too bad. I haven't actually been outside yet. <laughs> At least the, the snow seems to have departed for now. Too early for that. We've, I'm, I'm speaking from Glasgow this morning and we have got large amounts of snow right now. So there'll be a lot of sledging uh, and a lot of, a lot of happy children today. But thank you so much for joining us. I'm just going to hand over to both of you to lead us in our prayer time today. And I'll join again um, before we finish. So bless you guys. Over to you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lynn. Well, as you, Lynn said, we're going to be praying this morning for healing and well-being. And um, I'm going to start off by looking at um, physical, the physical side, and I've broken it down into prayer points. And the first prayer point I'm going to look at is um, terminal illnesses, whether the diagnosis is your own or someone else is someone else close to you. These prayers, I hope this morning will bring you peace. You see, health is something that should never be taken for granted in the blink of an eye and healthy prognosis can change into a, a terminal diagnosis. All you can do, whether you're the patient or a loved one, is give your life to the faith of the Lord. Only God knows what your destiny is and how long you will have on earth. God is the only one who will truly be able to put your worries at ease. And it's at times like these when you call to God for hope and peace. If you're a patient, you may be put on a brave face for those closest to you, but inside you're scared. And if you are a loved one who's receiving the awful news, you're trying to project a, a hopeful outlook because you know someone else needs you right now. Regardless of what the circumstance may be, look to these prayers this morning in this week of declaration for healing after a terminal um, diagnosis that will provide you with the encouragement and the peace that is needed. Deuteronomy 31 verse 6 says, be strong and courageous. Do not fear for it is the Lord your God who goes with you. He will not leave you nor forsake you. And in 2 Timothy 
1 verse 7 we read for God has given us a spirit not of fear but of power and of love and self-control so our first prayer this morning um, is praying for the physical and it's praying for terminal illness I'm going to ask you to pray with me I'm going to pray for healing I'm going to pray for peace of mind at this time so let us pray God, King of glory, God of glory, the, the doctors have told me that I am terminally ill and I only hope have weeks on earth. Lord, I am scared, but you are my only source of hope. I stand on your word this morning, which says, I will not die young, but live to declare the glorious works of the Lord. Fill me with your love and cast out fear from my heart. Heal me and I shall be healed. Let your resurrection power rest in every cell and function of my body as we pray for healing. We're also going to pray for peace of mind. Dear God, thank you for your everlasting love. Thank you for the life of your loved one that is going through a tough time, Father God, because of illness. Give him or her the peace that surpasses all understanding in the midst of this. Please help them to focus on you and you alone, for it is only you that can heal them. Lord, you resurrected um, Lazarus after four days. You can also re revive a dead body or body organs. When the enemy attacks Father God with discouraging thoughts, remind them that nothing is too complicated for you, Lord. Help them to fight the good fight of faith until, Father God, your outcome and your outcome alone is allowed to happen. And finally, for the terminally ill or those who are struggling with a terminal illness, we're gonna pray a prayer of courage God of the heaven may, my doctors told me that I have a terminal disease, but, and I should get everything in order. But dearest God, I, I choose your word over the doctor's report. And I declare and decree that no weapon formed against me in the form of this disease will prosper. I refute the doctor's report in the name of Jesus. Fill me with courage that I may stand firm in your promises and claim my healing that Jesus paid for at the cross bring into remembrance scriptures that will help me fight the good fight. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. So we're praying for physical and we've just prayed for terminal illnesses. We're now going to pray for those who are, who are suffering from chronic illnesses. The psalmist says he forgives all our iniquities and he heals our diseases. So next we want to pray for those who have a chronic illness. They suffer more than people see on the outside and have, some of them even lost faith at times. We wanna help them to, to, to hold on in their daily struggles. And when I talk about chronic illnesses, Ill, um, examples include diabetes, heart disease, mental health, could be arthritis, it could be kidney disease, it could be HIV, it could be multiple sclerosis. And many people with these diseases, they become depressed, in fact, Depression is one of the most common com complications of um, a chronic illness. So we're going to pray for all those who are, who are suffering with a chronic illness at this time. So let us pray. God of compassion, you willingly took on our human condition to experience the pain and the suffering and death that we do. Through your son's resurrection, you transformed suffering and death into new life and glory. And invite us to join our own pain and struggles to those of Jesus. Increase our faith and hope of all who suffer, especially those who are living with chronic diseases and illnesses and pain. Strengthen and confirm in them the promise of new life. New life. We pray this through the intercession of the Holy Spirit. God, you know each one of us well. You created each one of us. You know the numbers um, of the hairs on our heads. And you even know the thoughts conceived in our hearts before they're ever vocalized. You told us to come before you and you ask for every need in life. And you are our Jehovah Rapha, the God who heals. You have the final word on our destiny, the number of years we will live and serve on this earth. So we are coming to you um, as children of the Most High, longing to hear from you and asking for your divine healing there's so much that we sometimes do not understand about life. 
but we do know that with one touch, with one word, you can make us whole again. So please forgive us of any sins, cleanse us of any unrighteousness, Father God, and begin your healing from the inside out. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. So as I continue on the physical, we've prayed for those with terminal illnesses. We've prayed for those with uh, chronic illnesses. We're now going to pray for those who, who are suffering um, COVID-19. We know the virus is spreading and it's causing widespread anxiety and panic across the world. But the Bible says in John 14, 27, peace I leave with you. I give you peace, not as the world does, but it says, let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. And that is what God gives us in a time like this, his peace. And he rem the psalmist reminds us that the very moment I call you for help to the battle, the enemy turns and flees. So we're going to pray for those who are ill with um, the, the virus right now. And then we're going to pray for those who are, who are worried about the spread of the virus. Father God, you are, you are the ultimate healer. We come before you and we pray for those who are infected with this virus. We pray for not only their healing, but for them to be comforted while they are healed. Lord, we ask you, please eradicate every ounce of this virus from their body. Please heal every cell in their bodies, every infected part of their being. We pray for no long lasting effects in their bodies from this illness. Father, please heal them inside and out and provide them with the medical care that they need, with the medications they need and with the healing, not only physical, but spiritually, so they may live life and live that abundant life in Jesus' name. I, I also want to pray for those who are worried about um, the spread of the virus. Um, the Bible says we, we should not worry. Um, and we're reminded in John that Perfect love casts out all fear. So we pray, Father God, for those who are worried um, that you will give them a comfort at this time. So let us pray for all those who are worried. Hallelujah. Worry and fear are not of your heart, Lord. You remind us in your word that perfect love casts out all fear. And we pray that your perfect love upon the hearts of all those who are burdened with the, the fear of this virus. Lord, we know with no doubt that you are bigger than the threat of anything, especially illness. Please comfort those who are living in, in fear. Please free them from the bondage that anxiety creates within. Remind them that you are still on the throne, that you are still in control. Fully rain down the, the scenario that comes only from the Prince of Peace. Help those who are living in on the East to trust in you at this time, so that in times to come, we may feel rested. We may rest assured that you will be faithful to be with us until the end of age. Rest at the throne of Almighty God. Such fears and cast them upon you, Lord, for your burden is light and your yoke is easy. We know, Father God, that you will cover us at this time in your love. In Jesus' name, amen. And finally, in this part where we're praying for healing and well-being in the physical, finally, we want to remember the NHS and the, the medical profession. They're doing such an uh, amazing job at this time. Um, looking after so many people who are sick and going beyond and, be, and above their, 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 their professional approach. So we're going to pray for those who are looking after sick, for our doctors, our nurses, um, the medical profession, the ambulance drivers, etc., etc. So let us pray. Father God, we thank you for our doctors, our nurses, our, our hospitals, our, our ambulance drivers, and um, um, the 111 and 101 and all the medical profession at this time, Father God. And we pray, Father God, for them that you'll give them the, the, the courage and the strength to continue what they are doing. We come to pray for those who are caring for the sick. It takes a kind and selfless heart to care for those who are sick. And so, Father, we pray for them now in the name of Jesus. We pray that you would be their source of rest, their source of 
replenishment when they are weary, their source of hope in such overwhelming times. Lord, we know in Luke 6, it says that whoever pours out shall be, much shall be given in proportion. So we pray blessing upon these caregivers. We also pray for their help that they may not fall sick. Father, protect them with the edge of protection against the, the, the germs of coronavirus and help those who are given to be protected as the nurses, nurses um, the ill back to health. Bless them, Father God, and we thank you, Father God, for their courage, Father God, and their selflessness. This we are asking. Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Pastor Scott. I'm now going to be um, sharing the prayer points on emotional healing, because what we realize about healing is that it's holistic, um, that, you know, if our physical health is, is hit, then often our emotional health is hit as well. And we know that over the last year that we've all gone through so many um, difficulties and challenges with everything that's been happening with the pandemic. Also, what's been happening in terms of our society, in terms of racial justice and things like this, they can have a traumatic effect upon us. And many people um, have been experiencing depression. Many have been experiencing um, levels of anxiety, which Pastor Scott alluded to earlier. And so we just want to pray for those that may be um, feeling anxious or maybe experiencing a period of depression at this time. And praying not only for them, but also those that support them, those that are ministering to them maybe family members or um, you know church family that are trying to help them through this period so we're going to pray for all those experiencing depression and anxiety and I'm just going to refer to um, Philippians 4 verses 6 to 7 one of my favorite passages of scripture and it says do not be anxious about anything but in every situation by prayer and petition what we're doing right now with thanksgiving present your request to God and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. And so let us just begin to pray. As I pray, I encourage you to pray with me. Heavenly Father, we do give you thanks. We give you thanks that you invite us, O oh God, to your throne of grace. You invite us, O oh God, to come unto you. Say, come unto me, all who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. And Lord, you know all that's been going on and how weary we have become with all that's happening, Father God. And so we do pray, O oh God, that you would allow us to enter your divine rest in our minds, in our bodies, in our souls. Father God, I bring before you all those that are feeling anxious at this time. It doesn't matter what the source of their anxiety is. I just pray that you'll enter into their situation, that you'll enter into their environment. Even now, they may be at home, they may be listening and watching on Facebook. I just want to speak over them the peace of God. I want to speak over them the, the wholeness of God. I want to, and I want to pray, oh God, that you'll just saturate their environment where they are right now, that they'll feel your presence. I pray, oh God, that you'll command your angels concerning them heavenly father that they'll be encamped around them that they'll realize that no matter what they're going through no matter what they're facing that they're not facing it alone i think of the three hebrew boys that were in the fire and father god you was in that fiery furnace with them i know that you are a god that does not leave us to our own devices you not do not leave us alone but father god when we're walking through the valley you're walking through that valley with us you do not run away from our heart and our difficult emotions but father god you are our healer you are our wholeness you are the one whom we look to you are the one in whom we find our strength so i pray that right now in the name of jesus those that have a cloak of heaviness those that are feeling overwhelmed and burdened i pray right now in your holy and your precious name that the joy of the lord shall be their strength that the joy of the lord shall be their strength i pray that that peace of god that surpasses all all understanding will literally guard and protect their hearts right now in the name of Jesus. Father God, do what only you can do. I know that many of us, Lord, when we when we're um 
around people that may be experiencing anxiety and depression. We don't know what to do. We don't know what to say. We don't know how to be of help or assistance to them. But I pray that the wisdom of God will guide us and lead us, oh God, to have hearts and compassion for those that are feeling down, for those that are feeling depressed. I pray that you just put the name of someone on someone's heart, that they'd reach out to that person just at the right time. I pray that in our own um, personal time of prayer, that Father God, you'll bring names to our minds that will begin to intercede for people that may be feeling in despair in the name of Jesus. Sometimes it's not the people that look okay. Sometimes the people that look okay are really having difficult challenges inside. And I just pray, oh God, that our hearts will be open, Father God, to reach out to those people, Father, and to be a he a ear to hear and, and, and listen. Father God, I pray, oh God, for the organizations that are set up to listen, that are set up to help and to counsel those that are experiencing anxiety and depression. I know that the, the demand on their services has increased. So I pray for a supernatural provision for those organizations, oh God, that you would open up the windows of heaven over them and provide all the resources that they need to be able to minister to people in their time of need, in their time of despair in the name of Jesus. And Father God, for those that are carers, for those that are suffering mental ill health, Heavenly Father, I pray that you will be their strength and their sustaining presence as well, that they would have people that they can talk to, that they would have people that would look out and um, intercede for them in the name of Jesus. Let no one feel alone in the name of Jesus. And know that in this season, loneliness, oh God, is an issue. But I just pray, Father God, that they would feel your presence with them. We know that you're always with them, with us. But Father God, we pray that we would feel your manifest presence, oh God, and the surety that we are not alone in the precious and holy name of Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. My second point, prayer point in this area of um, emotional well-being and health is um, around grief and loss. So many people, even within our own church family, have lost loved ones. And you know that the way of grief, especially in this time where mourning, we can't mourn the way that we usually mourn. There's limits on the amount of people that um, can go to funerals and, and the, the things that we're used to doing, especially in the black community, some of the some of the things that we're used to do in the ways that we're used to mourning, like nine nights and being able to go around to people's houses, you know, before the funeral and all these types of things. Um, they've been under attack. They've not, we've not been able to do things the way that we, we usually would. And I know that that's a way on people. People. So I want to pray for people that are experiencing grief, but I also want to pray for everyone experiencing loss. And I don't just mean the loss of a loved one, but we've been in a season where the way that we do life has changed. And so we're, we're all in some way experiencing a sense of loss, a sense of loss in terms of the way that life used to be, or, you know, some people have lost jobs and et cetera. And the, the, the passage of scripture that really anchors this prayer point is Psalms 34 verse 18. And it says, the Lord is close to the brokenhearted and he saves those who, who's, who are crushed in spirit. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted and he saves, th saves those who are crushed in spirit. So as I pray, just pray along with me for those experiencing grief and loss. Heavenly Father, Lord, we just come to you right now, God, and we just pray for every single person who has lost someone this year that they care about, Father. We pray, oh God, that you would be the strength and shield at this time. Father God, we know often that healing, Father God, is a process. And Lord, we have to go through different stages of grief. But I pray that even as they go through these different stages, that Lord Jesus, you would be with them, that you'll be near them because you've promised that you'll be near to the brokenhearted. Father God, we pray that you'll be the lifter of their heads, the heads that are bowed down in grief in the name of Jesus. I pray that you would lift up their heads and I pray that they would realize even though they're going through a season of loss, even though Father God, emotionally it hurts, I pray that they'll know that there is hope hope there is hope in today because they're alive because you've kept them father god there is hope but i pray also that they wouldn't be afraid to experience 
their emotions, that they wouldn't be afraid to go through the process because they'd not, they would know that even as they go through these different stages of grief that you are with them, it's, that it's okay to be sad. It's okay to feel that sense of loss, but that that loss would not overpower them. It would not cause them, oh God, to be permanently bowed down, but that Father God, they would know that there's hope in the future, that Father God, that you've not left them even in the midst of their grief. I pray, oh God, that you will capture every tear, every tear that they cry, that they know when they don't have the words, oh God, because sometimes, oh God, when we are in grief, we don't have the words, we don't know how to pray, we don't know what to say. So I pray, Father God, that they would know that even their tears, oh God, are prayers, and that you don't, no tear falls to the ground that you do not capture, oh God, and that, Lord, you know their hearts, you know, Father God, what their mouths cannot utter. So I pray that even in the silence of their grief, oh God, that you would be the healing balm, oh God, around their hearts, around their minds in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, God. I pray, oh God, for those that have experienced loss. Because sometimes, Lord, when we experience loss, Lord, it can, it can affect our identity. Some people have lost jobs, oh God, and, and they don't know who they are now. They feel disorientated, Father God. And I just pray, I speak over them that they would know who they are in you, that they'd understand that the things they lo have lost do not define them, that they're defined by you, by who you say they are, by who they are in you. I pray that they would be in Christ and that Christ, you Lord, would be in them in the name of Jesus. And I pray that they'll take strength in the fact that you are a God of reinvention. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That you are a God of reinvention. That Father God, you, the recreative power of the Holy Spirit of God can give them new hope in a new season in the name of Jesus. So I just speak confidence and boldness over them, oh God, that even though they've lost that you, God, you know, when Job lost, he lost so much. He lost his health. He lost his possessions. He lost his family but you're a God of restoration. You gave him beauty for ashes, oh God. You restored him, Lord, that so that his, 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 his final condition was better than his initial condition. And I just want to declare over people that are experiencing grief and loss right now, that their final condition, their final emotional state will actually supersede their previous emotional state because Lord, your, your recreating power of the Holy Spirit can bring about such a beautiful restoration in Jesus' name. And I just want to thank you, Lord. I want to thank you for that work that you're doing in our emotional lives. Thank you, Jesus. My third prayer point is for healing from trauma, including the trauma of abuse. Many people are emotionally wounded because of things that have happened to them in the past, things that were out of their control. And it's affected the way that they relate to others. It's affected how they feel. It's caused them to have wounds in their hearts. But God is a healer. He's able to take the, the wounded places and, and to bring wholeness and restoration. So I just want to pray for anybody that's experienced trauma, that the Lord would heal them. And I, as I said before, just continue to pray along with me. Lord, we know that you are God, our healer. You are God, our healer, that your name is Jehovah Rapha, the God that heals us, that Father God, that, that you bring about your healing and restoration through the Holy Spirit. And I just want to pray for anyone that's experiencing trauma because of things that have happened to them in their lives. It might be rejections. It might be abuse, Father God, that Lord, you would just go into the deepest depths of their heart. And that through your Holy Spirit, you just begin to clean the wounds, Heavenly Father. Clean those wounds, oh God, the wounds that cause them not to want to be able to trust. The wounds, Father God, that cause them, Father God, to feel anxious in, in, in social situations. The wounds, Father God, that cause them to see themselves in a way that's not true, that in a way that Father God, you don't see them, that, that, that the, 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 what's happened to them has changed the way that they see themselves. So I pray in the mighty and the holy name of Jesus that the, the scales will be removed from their eyes, 
that they'll begin to see themselves as you see them, oh God, that they'll begin, Father God, to, to, to um, understand that, Father God, that what's happened to them doesn't define them, that it doesn't define who they are, that they are not what's happened to them, but they are who, that you, who you say that they are. And I pray, Father God, that you'll begin to work in the deepest depths of their heart to bring about healing and wholeness in those areas. I pray, Father God, that you would just do what only you can do. Others may have tried to help them, but Father God, sometimes it's, it's only you that can help. I think of the woman with the issue of blood. Father God, she had a chronic condition, Father God, and no one could help her. She spent all of her wealth trying to fix the, the problem. But Father God, it wasn't until she encountered you, until she reached out and touched the hem of your garment that she was made instantly whole. And so I just pray that some that have been battling with the trauma for so many years and they don't know how to heal, they've tried it all. I pray right now that wherever they may find themselves, that they will just reach out and touch you and that as they encounter you lord that they will find healing and wholeness in the name of jesus i pray that they would not stop seeking your face oh god and that father god in your presence lord they will be transformed in the precious and the mighty name of jesus i'm gonna uh, my last prayer point in this session section sorry is for self-esteem and wholeness in Jeremiah 1 5, it says, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart and I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. I want to pray for anybody that's feeling less than, anybody that's feeling unworthy, anybody that's feeling like they're not seen, they feel rejected. I want to pray for them and I want to pray that they would know that God sees them. I want to, want to pray that they would know that God knows them. So once again, just pray along with me. Heavenly Father, I want to pray for anybody that's suffering with a sense of um, low self-esteem. Father God, they don't feel seen. They don't feel appreciated. They don't feel important. And it's leading them to, into behaviors, Father God, that are damaging to them. It could be leading them into addiction, addictive behaviors. It could be leading them to, to, to draw upon drugs or to draw upon alcohol or to draw upon sex and, and using these things, Lord, as a, as a way of filling the gaps inside because they don't feel worthy. They don't feel like anybody loves them. They don't feel um, worthy of your love. I want to speak over those people right now that Father God, that your love would saturate their environment, that they would know, that they would understand, that they would receive, that you love them and that nothing shall separate them from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. I want to pray, oh God, that they would know that when no one else sees them, hallelujah, when no one else cares, that you care. I remember Hagar, Father God, when she ran away because of the ill treatment that she was receiving, that she identified you as the God who sees me. And so I want to speak to anybody that's in that desert place and you feel like you're alone and there's no one there, no one understands. I want to declare over you that God sees you and he knows your heart and he knows what you need. And I pray that you will just reach out to him today and receive that healing that you need in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. That's the end of this section. Thank you. Thank you, Minister Leone. So we've, on this um, healing and well-being um, declaration prayer, morning we've prayed for physical we've prayed for the emotional we're now going to pray for relations and relational um and we're going to start with loneliness and isolation so many people are lonely and isolated at this time maybe the last 10 months because of what we've been going through a lot of people have been isolated a lot of people feel so alone and psalms 23 the lord is my shepherd this scripture gently reminds us that we are never alone for the Lord is ever present with us. So we're going to pray for anyone who is struggling with loneliness, anyone who's struggling with isolation, and for those who, who, who experience loneliness in the midst of others around them, Jesus is with you. I'm going to say trust in him. So let us 
pray for those who are lonely and those who are isolated at these times. Father God, sometimes, Lord, they feel like there's no one they can turn to. Everyone is busy and involved in their own lives, Lord. Sometimes, Lord, they feel guilty for the, the, the crippling feelings of loneliness. They can be surrounded by people, but be so alone. Some people are isolated through this virus. And sometimes, Lord, they feel nothing. They feel like they have switched off from the world um, that they should be engaged in living. And sometimes, Lord, they forget that you love them. They even reject themselves and retreat instead of being open. Lord, we thank you that you walked on earth, that you experienced these feelings and took each one of them to the cross. Thank you, Lord, that we can always be real with you and trust in you to hear our prayers. And for those who, who have a deep struggle, Lord, we call on your name this morning in the state of loneliness and those mixed with grief and despair, Lord. Jesus, you said you are always with me. But where are you now when I feel empty? when my hope is nowhere to be found. So I call on you with all my heart this morning. Jesus, come be with me now. Comfort my soul, Lord. Heal my pain and console my aching heart. Jesus, we know all hope is found in you, that all peace comes from heaven and all your love comes from your heart. So Jesus, come into our hearts now. Fill us with your peace. Consume us with your love, Father God. And this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. So we've prayed for those who are lonely and those who are feeling isolated. And as we continue to pray for relationships, I want to pray for broken marriages. There are no perfect solutions to fix broken marriages. We live in a broken world full of broken people, broken promises and broken trust. But there is one who we can, who can be trusted one whose promises are always fulfilled, one who loves us for who we are right where we are, brokenness and all. In moments of uh, marital agony, heartbreak and suffering, we are never alone. One day at a time, one prayer at a time, he will pull us through to the future we cannot see right now. So do not be quick to write the conclusion before it's finished. So let us pray because he is still God, he's still good and we are still loved. So let us pray, let us be honest for all those who are going through um, broken marriages or marriage difficulties at this time. Father God, we understand that we live in a broken world and sometimes a uh, marriage doesn't turn out in the way you proposed it to. We fail each other and we fail you so often, but miraculously you love us no less. You never give up on us. It's never too late. Even when we feel it is too late for our marriage, we are feeling that way today. Father, it's never too late with you. We are ready to throw our arms in there and give up. And we feel, Father, misunderstood and, and hurt beyond we pray. But we trust in you, Lord. And when we trust you, the broken bits can be put back together. The hurt and the pain in our hearts that threatens to squeeze our eyes dry of tears and the misery of loneliness that fills the air, even in good comfort, we put them into your hands, Lord. We ask you, Lord, to revisit our wedding vows and we ask you, Lord, to fix what may be broken, Father God. So as we pray for those who, who, are, who are struggling in their marriage, um, pray that you will surrender your heart and your marriage to God this morning. Today, Lord, we give our marriages to you. Forgive us for putting them and our spouses before you. Forgive us for putting ourselves as well as our desires and our plans for the future before you and yours. Father God, we ask you to search our hearts, Lord, this morning. Convict us and clear out all the, the, the hardness and anything that is clogging up the flow of love in our lives. Father God, reset our relationship with you, Father. Restore our hope in Jesus Christ and open our minds and hearts to the healing truth only he can rush into our lives in these moments of madness. Give us the strength, Lord, to be brave, replace the, the fear of what might happen and what the future might hold with a Christ-centered love, a Christ-centered courage. We cannot be strong right now, but we are broken, and, and but we know the living God is our strength. And through your Holy Spirit, Father God, empower us with humility, with gentleness, with peace, um, and unity, Father God, and any anger removed, Father God, so that we can make our marriages work in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 
hallelujah. And as we continue to pray for relationships, we want to pray for the family and family rifts, family conflict. When your family life is in a state of conflict, when you're emotional, your emotions and your spiritual health will suffer. And I'm hoping that this prayer this morning will, will uplift you and remind you that these problems are only temporary and the Lord God is with you and he is eternal. So let us pray for our families and any family risks, any family conflict, that God will remove them. Dear God, in your infinite wisdom, you, you stated the institute of marriage and family. And I believe that my family is a gift from you, Father God. And the enemy has waged war against my family, but I'm asking Lord to, to, to remove the conflict, to remove any manipulate, manipulation, Father God. I'm asking you, Lord, to, that we come before you now and repent, Father, God, any selfishness, Lord, forgive us, give us patience so that we can resolve our differences in, in, in our families in an amicable way, Lord. Father, forgive us, Father God, for sometimes we are not ready to admit our mistakes and we only want to blame others. But we have your Holy Spirit and we're asking to remind us of the great sacrifice that our, our Heavenly Father made for us through his son Jesus, that way we may be humbled in our hearts. So please, Lord, help us to stop looking at each other's weaknesses and fault and that any family conflict may be removed in love, Father God, and in unity. And that oneness that was there, that, that will be returned and in Jesus' name. So that is a prayer for family rifts and family unity and any conflicts within our families to be removed. And as we continue to pray for healing and well-being and in our relationships, we're going to pray for rejection. We come before with so many people feeling rejected and we want to break the, the shackles of rejection. You see, God did not promise that men will not reject you, but what he did promise is that you will overcome. If you have suffered rejection lately, do not be angry with yourself. Instead, I want to encourage you to take it to God in prayer. Esther took a bold step in overcoming rejection through fasting and prayer. And David, he was the least recognized amongst his brothers, yet he was favored and chosen by God. Now it is your turn to be favored. If you will talk to God this morning about your rejection and the roots of that rejection, I'm sure God will honor his word and you will have a, a testimony in the end. So while we might be feeling rejected, we want to thank God. We want to thank Jesus for being our savior. We want to thank the Lord for all he has done in our lives. We want to thank God for answering our prayers. I want to thank Jesus that for every rejection that you've suffered in the past that he's brought you through and thus far. So I'm going to pray for God to help us to overcome the, the, the feeling of rejection, the, the root of rejection. So let us pray. Heavenly Father, as we come before you now this morning, please help us to overcome and rejection in the name of Jesus. We commit our lives into your hands. Father God, please lift us up um, above every form of rejection in the name of Jesus. It is written that the stone that the, the builders rejected became the, the cornerstone. So Heavenly Father, please make a, a precious and indispensable cornerstone this season in the name of Jesus. It is also written that Many are called, but few are chosen. So, Father God, I'm asking you to let us be among the chosen for a divine favor this season in the name of Jesus. Because your word says, blessed are, are that man shall hate you, but you shall separate us from that company, Father. Let your blessing fall upon each and every one who's feeling re rejected right now, Father God. Bless them, Father God. Father God, help them, Lord, to, 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 to get over that wall of rejection um, and that limitation um, that it may bring. Mary was highly favored among women, Father God, and let that season, that favored season, continue in the name of Jesus, just like David was preferred above his brother. He was chosen for God's anointing. Father, Father God, let each person who's feeling rejected be chosen for every good thing this season, Father God, as we come before you, just as Daniel was also chosen, Father God. Let us who are feeling rejected receive unmerited 
Pray for us among the chosen this season in the name of Jesus, because you began to be good work. So we'll let it be completed. So Father God, we thank you, Lord, that we can come and we can pray and ask for us to overcome any feelings of rejections. And we're asking this in no other name, but the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 So we've prayed for uh, loneliness and isolation. We've prayed for broken marriages. We've prayed for family roots. We've prayed for the feelings of rejection and filing in relationships. We, I want to pray for those of us who are maybe feeling angry. Those of us who want to pray for forgiveness. You see, when life knocks us down, it's easy to start harboring hunger about the things that have happened to us. So I want to pray that we can overcome anger. I want to pray that we can remove any resentment. I want to pray that we can ask God to call karma um, for those of us who may have a, a spirit of anger, resentment, to calm our minds, to calm our spirits. So for anybody who's suffering um, anger or unforgiveness, and ask us all to bow down for us to pray, bow our heads and pray as we ask God at this time, Father God. So Father God, as we come um, everlasting God, and we, we ask you now to help us to overcome our anger. You're a God, your peace surpasses all understanding. And when anger arises within us, Father God, we're asking you please to calm our minds and to soothe our hearts with your gentle words, to fill our lives with your perfect peace, Father God. May our personalities be shaped by your peace rather than by our frustration with your Holy Spirit in our lives, we can overcome anger. May we reflect your character, Lord. May we be slow to anger and rich in that steadfast love that comes from you. So Father God, and we know you are our shepherd. You are that guide and you provide for each one of us. And we're asking, Lord, when we start to feel resentment due to the circumstances around us remind us that you have prepared a table for each one of us and you can give us that peace that can come from no one else your anointing and your blessings are upon every aspect of our lives so father god i'm asking you in the name of jesus to remove any resentment and set us free from any frustration may your goodness and mercy follow us all the days of your life as we pray for the removal of any resentment and we pray for calmness some of us feel so angry because of the situation or because promises have not been kept. But Father God, we're reminded that you never leave us nor forsaken, forsake us in whatever circumstances, Father God, we face, Father God. So we're reminded that you have not left our side and that you'll never leave us, Father God. So I'm asking you, Lord, to, to calm our minds, almighty and powerful God. Help us to feel your calmness when we become angry, when pressure and, and, and conflict surround us, Father. Remind us that we are surrounded by your presence when you are with us, Father God. We don't need to lash out in anger. Please remove any anger towards other people and replace it with your trust with your provision and your care. May your confidence, Father God, may our confidence in your love replace any anger about our circumstance. And when we feel angry due to unmet expectations, Lord, remind us that satisfaction can only be found in you. May the love of the Father and the grace of the Son and the power of the Holy Spirit be with each one of you today. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Pastor Scott. I'm now going to um, wrap up our prayer points with praying for spiritual healing. Um, you know, all of the things that we've prayed about is really anchored in our spiritual healing. We know that where there is an absence of God, then there is brokenness. And so I'm going to just pray that the spirit of God will just saturate our world, saturate the UK, saturate our environment. Because we know where the spirit of God, there is freedom. And many people are in spiritual bondage and we just wanna pray that those chains are broken. And I'm also gonna pray, we'll put this together. We're also gonna pray for anybody that we know that doesn't know Jesus that doesn't know Christ, that doesn't know the love of God, that they would know him because we know that it's in relationship with him that we are healed on every single level, physically, emotionally, spiritually, and relationally. So if we just end with this prayer, 
Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, God, that you are the Lord that heals us. That, Father God, that you are with us and that you are for us. And that, Lord, that the deepest healing that we need is at a spiritual level. We know that the Holy Spirit of God is the refreshing rivers that restores our souls, that restores our spiritual beings. And we just want to pray that, Lord, your spirit would flood this earth that your spirit would flood our environments, that your spirit would flood our internal worlds in the name of Jesus. Send your spirit, God, because where your spirit is, oh God, there there is fullness of joy. Where your spirit is, there is freedom. We know that you came to set the captives free. I want to pray for anybody that's in spiritual bondage right now, that Father God, there's been things in their lives, there's been sins in their lives, there's been decisions in their lives that have become a cycle and that and they can't seem to break the cycle heavenly father but i pray in the name of jesus and i plead the blood of jesus that any dangerous or damaging cycles in people's lives father god spiritual strongholds will be broken right now in the name of jesus everyone under the sound of my voice anything in their lives that stubborn situations in their lives that are causing them harm whether it be on a spiritual level physical level that it will be broken and right now in the name of Jesus your people will be free because you came to set the captives free and I just pray that Father God as your children awaken as your children are quickened in their spirits that Father God they too will become a source of healing for others that they encounter that the broken will become the whole that the healed will become the healer that people oh God would, would encounter your children oh God and the presence of God in them Father God will begin to minister to those that are broken in the name of Jesus. Raise up a generation of God that are filled with your spirit in this earth. Raise up a generation of God that becomes solutions in your earth, solutions to the brokenness of God, solutions, Father God, to the damage and the decay. Reverse the decline, we pray in the name of Jesus. Reverse the decline and decay that we are experiencing in our world right now in the name of Jesus. We pray this on a personal level. We pray this on a national level. We pray this on a global level, oh God. Saturate this world with your spirit in Jesus name we pray thank you God and I just want to end by declaring um John 3 um chapter 1 verse 2 over us all it says dear friends I pray that you may enjoy good health and that all may go well with you even as your soul is getting along well and I declare over myself and I declare over you that it is well with our souls because we are in Christ and Christ is in us. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much to Pastor Brian and to Minister Leone for that powerful, powerful time of prayer. Um, I just want to just, just bless you guys in the name of Jesus and um, that everything that you have given out this morning, that the Lord would pour and multiply back to you, that all the prayers you have sown, that he would um, just just bless you with answers um, in your own lives. I bless your families in Jesus' name. I bless your ministry in the name of Jesus. Lord, I just pray for Cannon Street Memorial Baptist Church that you would pour out your spirit there, that all the Hallelujah. prayers for healing, Lord, that we have asked for today, mm. Lord, that, that we would see them through this church and other churches in Birmingham, Father. Um, Lord, that all that Thank has been sown, that we would see fruit in Birmingham and that you would anoint um, your servants, Lord, in all that they're seeking to do to bring glory to your name um, in their own community. So we bless you guys in Jesus' name. Thank you so much. Thank you. Praise Thank God you. for that amazing, amazing session. Um, we are almost coming to a close. Um, a few, you know, we have, you know, we've touched on quite a lot of deep subjects this morning. So um, first of all, I just want to say, um, if you've got a prayer request, and um, particularly if it's related to um, any of these areas that we've talked about today, can you please send that in? We would love to stand with you in prayer. We've got a team of people who are, are, are interceding. We've already seen God answer some prayers this week. So please send them in. The, the information is there on the screen. Um, and we'd love to, to stand with you in prayer. As this week of decoration has, is coming to an end, we've still got a couple of amazing things coming up later on today. Um, we've got our final live show tonight on TBN. 
um, with an amazing group of leaders. So please make sure you are tuned into that live on TBN and also on YouTube and that the link will be available. And we've got an exciting after party for the, the young and the young at heart um, on our We Are Tier Fund Instagram channel as well. And that follows at nine o'clock. So on this final day, let's um, go out with a bang. Those events are both going to be great. Please um, come and be part of them. Now, of course, one of the, 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 you know, the amazing ways that we partner with God is through prayer, but we also partner with God by sowing our finances. And I just want to close by telling you about this amazing way you can do that, which is called Awakened. Awakened is the great, great name for this initiative because what it does, and I've seen this with my own eyes in many countries I've had the privilege of visiting, is that people um, are awakened to the potential that God has given them um, in their lives to flourish that has been silenced through poverty. And through uh, this initiative, what it is, is, is small groups, community groups of people coming together to save small amounts of money and they take it in turns to take loans and start businesses. Um, and this is absolutely transformational. I have been completely undone by the effects of what, what I've seen um, and witnessed through these groups coming together um, and, and saving and just discovering the gifts and the talents that God has put within them. So for as little as £10 a month, it's, it's so cost effective as well. If, you're, if, you're, if God touches you and moves your heart and you want to do something really tangible today, £10 a month will enable us to start another one of these self-help groups and see a group of people come into that place of healing that we've been praying for, restoration, body, soul and spirit. Um, I've, I've seen... I actually remember being in Ethiopia and, and thinking, this is redemption in practice, people being, people being restored body, soul and spirit through this amazing, powerful work. So you can find out how to um, be a part of that if you go on to Tier Fund's website um, and Declaration 2021. So just leave that with you. So we're coming to an end now. Bless you if you have been with us all through this week and also um, been praying with us this morning. May you have a really encouraging and restful weekend. Thank you so much for being with us. Bless you guys.